So today you're going to be learning about the last and largest members of the squirrel family, the marmots and prairie dogs. But because there's not actually enough species there to fill the whole video, and I have a few other species that are fairly large and can't be compared to any other species of mammal in North America, you're going to get a few extras for later in the video. But I'm going to leave that as a little surprise. So what we're going to do is start. The black-tailed prairie dog is the most widespread species of prairie dog, being found all over the plains and into some of the mountain states, but just to the east of where they become the actual Rocky Mountains. The first thing you'll notice about prairie dogs is that they're not dogs. They are indeed a type of large ground squirrel that lives in colonies. The black-tailed prairie dog is the only prairie dog species with a black tail and a relatively long tail at that. It does not have black markings on its face like the other prairie dog species. And there may be some overlap in range with some other prairie dog species, but the, for the most part, this is the only species you'll see in most of its range. The white-tailed prairie dog is found in Wyoming, Utah, and Colorado, and it has, as the name suggests, a white tail. It has black markings on its face and is yellow-gray in coloration. It's also the only prairie dog species in most of its range. The Utah prairie dog is found only in Utah. And it looks mainly the same as the white-tailed prairie dog, except it's more orange-colored, and their ranges don't overlap. This is the last prairie dog species, and it's found all over the southwestern states of Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. And the Gunnison's prairie dog looks similar to the white-tailed prairie dog, but with a white-edged tail, instead of being fully white. Also, it is yellowish instead of yellow-gray, and there is no range overlap with any other species of prairie dog. Now, this is a common sight around where I live, the groundhog, also known as the woodchuck, which is actually our first marmot species we'll be going over. There is a melanistic form, which you can see on the left, but for the most part, the form you'll see is the brown form on the right. As a marmot, it is fairly stocky with a bushy tail, and it's also the only marmot species in North America that isn't primarily found in mountainous terrain. It's found in the eastern United States and all over Canada. The yellow-bellied marmot is found on the western side of the United States, in mostly mountainous areas. It has a yellow belly, as you might expect, as well as a brown back and sides. The Olympic marmot is named after the Olympic Peninsula, which it is found on in Washington. Not because it's an especially good athlete or anything, though it might be, who knows. It has a fairly light color and is the only species of marmot found in that area of the country. The Vancouver Island marmot is a fairly rare species of marmot only found in mountainous areas in the center of Vancouver Island. It is dark brown with a white muzzle and is also the only species of marmot within its range. The Alaska marmot is only found in northern Alaska in the Brooks Range, where it is the only species of marmot. It's mostly white colored with black on the top of its head. The hoary marmot is named after its grayish-white appearance, although it has some orange-brown on its hindquarters and tail. It's found all over the northern Rocky Mountains and into Alaska. There is an error with this map, as it shows the hoary marmot in northern Alaska where the Alaska marmot is present. Though the reality is that's just because taxonomists aren't entirely sure they are two separate species. So they lump the two of them into the same map. For the purposes of this video, they are two separate species though, and the hoary marmot is present everywhere on this map except northern Alaska. And that's all for the squirrel family. This little guy here is neither a squirrel nor a beaver. It's often called a mountain beaver, but it's not really related to beavers. The common name for it these days is Suwalel, and it has a tiny tail, small ears, and a dark brown coloration. And it's only found in the Pacific Northwest and into the Sierra Nevada mountains of California. Here's a species everyone should already know of, the American beaver, called that to differentiate it from the Eurasian beaver. It's found all over North America and has also been introduced to southern Argentina and parts of Europe, like Finland. You can tell it's a beaver by its size, it's massive as you can see, and its big paddle-shaped tail. When it's in the water, you will not see the tail though, you'll only see one big hump, which is part of how you might differentiate it from a muskrat. The koipu is an introduced species in North America, Europe, Africa, and Japan, and it's originally from South America. It's smaller than a beaver, but larger than a muskrat. It has a rounded tail, as you can see here, and its head is square rather than round, like the beaver or the muskrat. 
When it's in the water, its swimming profile is similar to the beaver, with one hump and the tail beneath the water. This is the common muskrat, and it's found all over North America. It's fairly small compared to the two previous aquatic rodents. Its tail is flattened on the sides, as you can see here. Its swimming profile is also different from the beaver and the koipu, with its head, body, and tail at the surface of the water, forming what looks like three humps. This is the second species of muskrat, the round-tailed muskrat, only found in Florida and a bit of Georgia. As you might expect, its tail is rounded, and it's also significantly smaller than the common muskrat, and the common muskrat is not found within its range. The North American porcupine is found all over western North America, as well as in northeastern North America, and down into the Appalachian Mountains a bit. It's covered in pointy quills, and there are no other porcupine species in North America, though there are several more down in South America. The nine-banded armadillo is fairly easy to identify by its armadilloness. It's the only species of armadillo in North America, and it's found all over the southeast. It's believed that its range will increase further to the north in the United States due to climate change. Also, like the porcupine, there are several other species of armadillo in South and Central America. The Virginia opossum is the only species of opossum in North America. It's also the only marsupial. It's fairly obvious when you come across it what it is, it, with its white face and gray body and slow movements. They're found all over the eastern United States and have also been introduced to the west coast. And again, there are many other species of opossum to the south in South and Central America. And that's all for today. I hope you enjoyed hearing about how to identify the squirrels of North America, as well as the several extra species that I went over in this episode. And if you did enjoy it, please leave a like and subscribe to see more of this kind of content. The next species groups I'll be going over are the large herbivores, large carnivores, and small carnivores. And we'll see where to go from there. Thanks for watching and have a nice day.